insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 16, Role Models. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my lovely and talented co-host, Madison Whalen. Hey, everyone. How you doing today, Maddie? Pretty good. So, uh, just right off the bat here, uh, full disclosure, this is actually the third time that we've tried to do this topic on a podcast Uh, And we've not met with much success in the past. Yep, I definitely have to agree. So you should be well-practiced on this topic at this point in time. Mm -hmm. Uh, I did go back and do some additional research because we were lacking in material. And uh, hopefully we can knock it out of the park this time. Let's hope so. So uh, we'll do a quick rundown. We will be doing a rather lengthy definition of what a role model is. Uh, which I think part of our failures in the past have been a lack of definition. Then we'll talk about what the qualities of a positive role model are, the effects of positive role models on teens. Uh, Then I reserved a a portion at the end to do a question and answer session real quick, um, just in case we didn't cover all the, all the information, all the, Uh, aspects that you had on role models and then of course we'll finish up with our closing remarks and our shout outs so are you ready sure so we start out today with our definition of a role model Uh, this particular definition comes from study.com And it says, a role model is a person other people look up to in order to help determine appropriate behaviors. Role models can be either positive or negative. Positive role models offer a range of helpful and useful behaviors. Negative role models, on the other hand, offer examples of harmful or disruptive behaviors. Virtually anyone can be a role model. But in Western culture, publicly visible figures such as athletes, actors, musicians, and celebrities are are the most common examples of role models. Other common role models include members of the clergy, police officers, and parents. Most of these people can be considered either negative or positive role models depending on their behaviors. Figures like drug dealers and gang members can be considered almost exclusively negative because of the behaviors they display. Uh, As the sample suggests, visibility plays an important part in making someone a role model. The most visible examples, like athletes or actors, involve individuals for whom public visibility is part of the job. Since many people can observe these individuals' behaviors, it is likely people will imitate, imitate, I'm sorry, imitate their behaviors and attitudes. While people of all ages may have role models, it's generally young people who are still developing their own identities who try so hard to emulate their role models. So, very lengthy definition of what a role model is. Yep, I can definitely tell that's very, that's actually quite long. Okay, so I think we've, we've really well defined what a role model is in this case here. Definitely. So in moving through the rest of the podcast, I'd like you to keep this very well-defined definition in mind. Okay. Are we ready to move on? Sure. Okay. Okay. 
So the qualities of a positive role model, and I'm going to give you these one at a time, and I want to get your thoughts on each of them, see what you think about them. Okay. Uh, now this comes from a website called livestrong.com. And again, all the links are available in the credits at the end of the podcast. So the first quality is moral, and they describe moral as a good role model has high moral values. Research found that children respect those who practice what they preach. Role models who support worthwhile causes and who are willing to act on their beliefs help children develop and strengthen their own values. Role models behave ethically and demonstrate honesty. So what are your thoughts on the morality side of role models? I definitely think the morality is a good um, <coughs> um, quality for a good role model because um, in school we, ha we watch CNN 10 for, and take notes on it. And occasionally there would be like a CNN hero who would do something good for um, com the community, like helping feed poor people, helping children get into good foster homes who have, well, terrible parents. Right. I'm just gonna say or that. no parents. Or no parents. And I can definitely see, like, younger kids always looking up to them, always wanting to be honest, and I can definitely see being having good moral is a good quality for being a role model. So can you think of anyone who you know right at this moment who demonstrates this quality? Um, Friends, family, anyone like that? Well, I definitely think you guys contribute much. Okay. Um. And what did, let me ask you this. We we had an event that we went to today. What did we go to this morning that was for Mommy? Um, we went to her heart walk at Ocean City. Right. So this was um, a five-mile walk that Mommy did. She raised money for charity for uh, heart, the Heart Foundation. Um, and, and to me, I mean, that's a good demonstration of morals where you're, you're, not only trying to raise money, but you're you're actively doing something to try to try to help someone else. I also know that she donates blood occasionally. She does every every few months when she's allowed to. She donates blood to help others as well. So I think mommy is an excellent example of this. Mm -hmm. So the next trait that we have here is confident. So they say most uh, people admire those who project confidence. Good, good role models have a healthy appreciation for their accomplishments. They are able to acknowledge their skills and achievements without becoming arrogant. Healthy self-confidence manifests as pride in who you are and what you've learned through your life. So before I even ask your thoughts on that, let me ask you this. Do you understand what they mean by arrogant? Yes. Okay, good. So that's that's an important statement in this qualifier here. So... You tell me, how important do you think confidence in a role model is? Well, I would definitely say that confidence would definitely be a good quality for a role model as long as you don't overuse it. Like, it's good to be confident, like, if someone was being bullied or hurt, I would definitely, if you, have the, if you had the confidence to help in any way, I definitely think that would be a good role model for younger people who might have seen someone like that do something. And I think that's a very good point. Um, another example, and I'll go back to Mommy on this, is um, Mommy has a, a colleague that she used to work with uh, who went to another job and was interested in having her come work for him. Uh, but he basically told her that, you know, the position itself paid basically what she was already making. And mommy thought about it, and she decided, well, it might not be worthwhile to pursue that um, because she knows that she's worth more than that to this individual if this individual is reaching out to her. So it's that level of confidence there that, hey, if you want me to come come work for you, 
then you need to pay me what I'm worth. So that confidence is something that allows you to be more successful. And it's not, it wasn't, had nothing to do with greed or anything like that. It was, I'm valuable to you. So you need to recognize that value. You can't bring me in at, you know, a salary that's not comparable to the value that you're going to get out of me. I'm confident enough to know the value that I'm bringing to you. So that's another uh, example of where this confidence comes in because then you're confident. If that's who your role model is, then you're confident in what you want to do. If you want to have a certain position in the band or if you want to play a certain sport or if you want to get a certain kind of job, it's important to be confident in your own abilities. You know, we, you and I had the discussion and we had it with mommy about you taking on um, the more advanced classes in school next year. And it was important for you to have the confidence to know that, hey, I did it this year and I brought in, brought home straight A's. There's no reason I can't do it next year. And that confidence is going to help you excel in your classes next year. So it's a very important trait. I agree. Uh, the next thing that we have is hard working. Role models demonstrate their commitment to a desired goal and are willing to invest the necessary time and effort to achieve success. They don't give up easily and they persevere when confronted by obstacles. Their passion to succeed inspires youngsters to follow through and reach the goals they set for themselves. Olympic athletes, for example, motivate others through their dedication. How important is hard working to you from a role model standpoint? Well, I would definitely say that would be an important trait for a role model because it would show that you're willing to put all your effort into one goal and it'll, sh- and it'll show kids, um, younger children, that um, being... Having good, having hard work will is a good trait. Yeah, well, and a good example that I want to point to you as as having is, you know, you do your chores, right? You have a job that you do at home, and you earn money for doing that job. And when you earn that money, it takes on a new meaning for you, doesn't it? Like, you're not as quick to go out and spend it frivolously on something silly. Nope. Because you work hard for it. And when you get rewarded for your hard work, you have an appreciation for that reward. So that is an example of a quality you have as a role model and that you don't have a problem doing the work and getting the reward for it. And you appreciate your ability to do that. So kudos to you for that. Thank you. Respectful. This is one that I think is very important. In order for role models to be influential, they must show respect for others. Young people appreciate being treated with respect and admire those who treat them and others that way. Role models who demonstrate selflessness and a democratic, non-prejudiced view of those different from themselves earn the admiration of others. And before I turn this over to you for your input, the one thing I did want to say here is, in my experience, respect is probably the most um, valuable currency that anybody could have. Because if you aren't respected by your peers, by your family, by your coworkers, no matter who throughout life, if there isn't respect, then it diminishes your worth. If I can't respect you, I can't trust you, I can't work with you, um, I can't I can't care for you if I don't respect you. So respect is very important. What are your thoughts on respect? Well, I definitely agree 100%. I mean, if you weren't respectful and you were just snobby, and I'm going to go back for confidence, with how, with your efforts, you would pretty much be snobby, no one would look up to you, and you'd be a negative role model. Right. But with respect, you'd show that you don't care about just yourself and your qualities, you care about other people and the way they perceive you as. Yeah. 
and you care that you're a good person. And that's absolutely right. Yeah, you're the respect that you have for others and that others have for you help build your reputation. And your reputation is probably the most important thing that you have in your life. So very good thoughts on that. The next one and the last one that we have in, on this subject that we'll talk about is optimistic and creative. Role models inspire others with an upbeat, optimistic outlook on life. Role models tend to see the bright side in difficult situations and can find creative solutions to their problems. How important is optimism to you when it comes to role models or leaders, even, we'll say? Well, I'll definitely say optimism is definitely important because it'll get people more involved in what you're trying to say, and it'll give people a brighter look on life because I'm pretty sure most teenagers, including myself, are guilty of having a very negative view on life. Right. But with, like, optimism, you might actually get a better view on life and become a better person. And anyone who is a role model that can show that to kids is definitely a good role model and not a negative one. If you're a negative one, you probably don't have as much optimism. And if you're a good one, you probably have a lot of optimism and definitely inspire young minds and children. And I agree. And I think, you know, I'll be the first one to admit that I ding myself on this one because I, you know, I don't have a negative outlook on things, but because of my position and what I do, you know, it's always been my job to find things that are vulnerable and fix them before they get compromised, you know, working in technology and stuff. So as a result, I tend to be over analytical and I'm the type of person who, you know, will take the glass half full, half empty scenario. Someone will ask me if the glass is half full and I'll, you know, my response is immediately, how did the water get in there? How did the water level get to that point? If you pour the water in, then it's half full. If you poured a full glass out to get to that, then it's half empty. And people tend to look at that on me and say it's negative. It's really not. It's what I'd like to describe as... as a real, um, a re realistic view. Realistic, exactly. So, uh, But optimism is, is important because, you know, the days that we see you and you're down and you come home from school and you're down, you know, one of the first things that we try to do is, one, figure out if something happened, and two, let's, let's figure out something that was good that happened today. Unfortunately, I'm I'm quite stubborn in those times, and I'm pretty sure I'd probably find you more annoying if you did that. You probably do, um, but, you know, persistence is important when it comes to that sort of thing. Yep. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the effects that positive role models have on teens. So the first thing that we talk about here is self-esteem and academic performance. Teenagers who have positive role models have greater self-esteem, obviously, mm -hmm. and perform better in school than teenagers without role models in their lives. Students may have coaches, teachers, famous athletes, or parents as role models. Positive displays of sportsmanship, determination, drive, and ethics by role models can help children to emulate and adopt these positive attributes. So I'll turn it over to you in a second. But one thing I did want to point out here is that human nature is very... Um, Confusing. <laughs> Yes, human nature can be very confusing, but humans are... Um, the only oh, really known being in the world. No, no, that's not the word that I'm looking for. Uh, they emulate a lot. So we learn our behavior. Our behavior is learned emulation, okay? So when we see someone being affectionate with um, an animal, we'll take, we'll take a step back to our pets episode. If I see someone being affectionate towards our animal and I see the animal returning that affection, I then want to emulate that, that effect by being nice to my kids or my pets or whatever. So we learn through emulation, which is why it's important that we have positive role models because we try to emulate those role models. Um, 
so based on that itself, how important do you think um, boosting your self-esteem role models play in that in that relationship? I would definitely say that role models will help build your self-esteem. It'll help role mo- positive role models will probably give you a more positive view on life and make you stop looking for the flaws you have and instead looking f- for th- for all of the good things you have in you. That's a very good point. Helping with your self-esteem. Good point. The other point, uh, the next point that we have here is uh, role models, positive role models, help in avoiding drug and alcohol abuse. Positive role models can help children avoid the use of drugs and alcohol. For example, role models in sports who promote excellence without the use of performance-enhancing drugs can have the effect of discouraging the use of steroids in athletes who look up to these role models. And I don't, you know, I don't want to lock onto that scenario as being the ultimate example. Uh, I'd much rather look at the role models that you see in day-to-day life like, for instance, um, last year you went through the D.A.R.E. program at school. Um, and the role models that you had there were your teachers, um, the police officers that were running the D.A.R.E. program. These are the role models that you really need to see because they're everyday role models. These are the people that you deal with. Um, did you have a positive reaction to the D.A.R.E. program when you were in it? Well, honestly... At first glance, I wasn't, I was a little uneasy because I didn't feel as though I wanted to learn about all that stuff, even though I knew before I wasn't going to do drugs. Mm -hmm. But afterwards, I definitely got a positive view on, I definitely had a better view on life, knowing that drugs were bad and it could possibly and potentially kill me. Yes. Yes. And and the, the officers that you had in your D.A.R.E. program, did you see them as role models in helping you to avoid that? Yep, I do. I yep. did. And they do a fantastic job, and I give them full credit for not only the time that they spend, but the caring that they put in. I mean, they, they genuinely care about the kids that they're trying to keep away from these things. I also want to mention that both you and Mommy also helped me stop, not avoid drugs and alcohol even more, and you know that I get a kind kind of insane when mommy mentions that she's going to drink alcohol or something. Right. You know how I am about that. And occasionally mommy will have a glass of wine here and there. It's nothing to excess. Um, but I think, I think if anything, it's a good example of, you know, when you're of age to consume alcohol, obviously drugs are illegal for everyone regardless of age. But when you reach an age where you're, Uh, legally allowed to consume alcohol, there's nothing wrong with having alcohol in moderation, you know, in a social environment or something like that. And, you know, there's even studies that show that there are are certain health benefits to it. And mommy's a good example of that. You know, mommy can have a stressful day, come home, have a glass of wine, help her relax. And, you know, she doesn't drink to excess is the important thing. Yeah, but normally I would get a little paranoid. I would always say, you're going to get drunk. You're going to get drunk. Dad is going to drive if you're going to get drunk. But she doesn't, though, does she? Nope, she doesn't. Have I... you ever seen Mommy drunk? Nope. No, because she doesn't do that. Yeah, and you, and neither of you two smoke either, so. No, smoking is something that my parents turned me off of because they both smoked. Yeah, I also learned stuff from school, multiple assemblies and stuff. Saying how to pa- about tobacco and no and like we even had this one conversation where the government's trying to get people to eat healthy yet they're not Ill- illegalizing tobacco. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, the government can sometimes be rather hypocritical in its stance on regulation. Yep. So the next thing that we have is anger management, something I think all teens can benefit from. Children learn how to handle life's problems in part by seeing how their parents and caregivers handle them. Children are very likely to follow their parents' behaviors. This reality makes it important for you to show good skills in handling your anger. Also, children who have good communication with their parents are more likely to ask them for advice instead of turning to peers. When parents give respect to their children, 
they are more apt to get respect. When a child knows how to give respect and feels respected, the child is less likely to have feelings of humiliation, anger, or embarrassment and is less likely to lash out. Now, before you speak, I just want to say in the beginning where you follow your parents' footsteps. Right. I just want to say, unfortunately, that's a kind of a bad thing for me. You let yell at technology at times, and unfortunately, that rubbed off on me, and I yell at technology, too. Well, I will offer a rebuttal there. See, when I was your age, I had anger management issues. And my anger management issues were not restricted to yelling at technology or inanimate objects. I would get into fights. And I would get into a lot of fights. And I got into trouble quite often when I got into those fights. And I often did things I didn't like. I hurt people I didn't want to hurt. And there were consequences to it. So one of the things that I had to learn fairly early on was anger management. And the anger management, I guess the biggest takeaway for me was don't hurt people, hurt inanimate objects if you have to. So that's sort of where that comes from. I have to, you know, that energy had to be focused somewhere. I mean, even you've had some coaching in this. Like what are, what are some of the techniques that you've been told to focus that anger so that you're not targeting it at people? Well, normally I would have to push a wall, getting all my anger out on, using force. Right. Uh, probably counting backwards, yeah. repeating in my head, they're not worth it, they're not worth it, they're not worth it. And also screaming at technology helps as well. And there you go. And they're all valid techniques. I have to agree. I've never actually lashed out at anyone. I just lashed out at technology and inanimate objects. And that's important. And ultimately, you're the one that pays the bill for that because if you break your phone because you get mad at someone, then you're the one that has to replace your phone. Yeah, two point. So anger management is another good thing that role models help us with. The other one that we have here and the last one that we have in this category is overcoming difficulties. Role models can have the effect of encouraging people to achieve their goals despite difficulties. Maya Angelou overcame poverty and abuse during her childhood and became a best-selling inspirational writer. Um, She's another example of a role model who can inspire people to overcome their difficulties and achieve success. So we all, I mean, even you know, everyone encounters difficulties in life at various stages. Yep. And knowing how to, I, I imagine, is what, how to overcome those is important, is it not? Yep, it's definitely important. So do you have any examples of difficulties that a role model has helped you with? Well, yes. So, as you know, in the beginning of the year, it was definitely stressful. You know, I kind of had emotional breakdowns. But afterwards, after you guys talked with me and I was able to share my problems with you, I started calming down, and eventually, as the school year got on, I stopped facing those difficulties, and now I'm perfectly fine in school. I haven't really had too many difficulties. Excellent. Excellent. Let's do a little bit of question and answers now. Alrighty. Now that we've had the discussion and you understand what all these examples are, let me ask you, do you think it's a good idea to have role models? Yes, I do. And the reason for that being is um, to have a positive effect on the child. It, Like we said before, children know don't really have um, role models, probably won't have them as many positive effects with positive role models like other children do who have positive role models. Kids who don't have role models probably don't have as many life lessons and probably are more snobby and less likely to become successful, confident, hardworking, and any other quality a role model should have. And they're more likely to maybe even become a negative role model. Okay, good points. What qualities do you think are most important in role models? Well, hardworking, definitely. Um, 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 respect, obviously. That is definitely one of the best qualities. Okay. Um, optimism, yes. Um, and more 
Well, pretty much all the ones we talked about are all important. I mean, sure, some are more important than others, like respect is more important than, like, optimism, but still. Are all. there are there any qualities that you think are important in a role model that we didn't discuss today? Um, yes. Uh, let me just think. Would you care to share any I, of them? I will. Oh, my <laughs> God. Why? Why? <laughs> Um, I guess, um, intelligence. Okay. That's certainly helpful. Yeah. How about one that we mentioned but we didn't talk about, like sportsmanship? Mm, yeah. You know, it's important to, to, you know, be a good winner, but also to be a good loser at times because you don't always win, right? Yeah. Um, so the next question I have was, do you have any role models? Yes, I do. I have you and Mommy, who are definitely good role models. I have the D.A.R.E. officers. Um, mm -hmm. And I also have all my teachers that um, I've had during the years of school I've been in. Very good. Teachers, they all serve, you know, as good role models. But I think teachers through the years, because so many of them come across your path, that they are excellent role models. And the last question that I had here is, do you think you are a role model? Well, looking at all the qualities we've discussed, um, let's just go down. Sure. Let's just go down the list. So one of the qualities is moral, like showing good quality in, for other people. Um, I'd say I can be quite moral at times as long as I'm not in a negative attitude. Okay. Now um, let me ask you let me ask you a counter question. If you do something wrong, and I don't mean kick the desk like you just did, <laughs> but if you do something wrong and say you hurt someone's feelings, do you recognize that and try to correct it? Do you feel bad for doing that? Yes. Then I think that is a good good handle on what your moral compass is. For confidence, um, in some cases, in some cases not. Okay. Because unfortunately, I feel as though I might have social anxiety, so. Okay. Well, you know, you can't be confident in everything, right? Yep. Hardworking, like we said before, I definitely feel as though I'm hardworking in things. You're a definite good example of that. Respectful, I definitely can say, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you can say too, I'm quite respectful to others. Well, more importantly, other people say that to me, and really? that's the biggest compliment. So when I, when someone comes up to me and tells me how respectful you are and how polite you are, you know, that's I couldn't ask for a bigger compliment. So optimistic and creative. Um, you probably need some work there, huh? Well, on op the optimism side, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Well, like you said before, like you have um, a real, real realistic realistic view on life. I feel as though I'm in that realistic view of life. I don't always have a negative view on life, even though most of the time I do. Right. Okay. But I'll I can buy definitely that. say I have more. Like, like there are kids at school that annoy both me and my friend Lindsay, and I can definitely say. I don't enjoy it very much, and I'm pretty sure Lindsay doesn't enjoy it very much either. I don't think there's too many people that like being annoyed, to be honest with you. Yeah. So I've noticed that uh, in the beginning of the years, of course, I felt really angry and I and wanted to punch some, something. Okay. But over the, over the school year, I've started to more calm down, and unfortunately, Lindsay has not gone to that stage yet. But I'm normally the one telling her, hey, it's not worth it. Let's just go back to what we were doing, okay? Well, and you are a few years older, so you are expected to be a little bit more mature. And I also taught her some of the lessons you taught me. Like, you're not going to matter later on in your life. They're only going to annoy you for this period in your life. Eventually, you'll move away from them, and you'll go on your separate path. Right. And that's a, I think that's a safe philosophy. And creative, you know I'm creative. You are creative beyond my wildest imagination. Yep. That's a pun, by the way. Oh, wow, Daddy. 
That's all the questions that I had. I think we are just about ready for closing remarks and shout outs. And I turn it over to you for closing remarks and shout outs. Well, okay. So for anyone who does have role models, I would definitely make sure looking through the list we've had, I would definitely advise you to make sure you check and make sure they're not a negative role model. If they are, try not to follow them, like, at all, because, like we've said before, negative role models are not good for teenagers and younger minds. And always try to follow positive role models. And if you do think you're a role model or aren't quite sure if you're a role model, please try some of the qualities and... Please try your best to be a good role model and try to think of what other people would think of you and your own reputation. All very good points. Did you have shout outs to anyone for today? Well, I will give a shout out to all the role models I have, including my parents, the dare officers, and my teachers. Awesome. Well, I think that does it for us today. Uh, I want to thank you, Madison, for another fantastic podcast. And I want to thank you once again for having me. And uh, third time was a charm. I think we got through this one successfully finally. I definitely think we did too. And we can put this one in the books. All right. We'll talk to everyone next week. See ya.